legal process outsourcing and ethics. I will quickly start with the class now. Uh, like I said, we will be dealing with legal process outsourcing and ethics. Through your speed uh, module, I am sure you know what is outsourcing uh, and its importance as well. Outsourcing is traditionally understood to be the delegation. We can say um, when one organization delegates its work to external supplier, uh, that is that's outsourcing or the delegation of work. Now, this outsourcing or this delegation could be of hardcore uh, business processes or it could be non-core uh, business processes. That depends on the nature of the work that the organization is dealing with. But yeah, it could be both core and non-core business processes to the external supplier. We obviously know the importance of outsourcing. First, it is cost effective. Then it helps maintain quality of work and more, more than anything when a particular work has been outsourced, the in-house resource can focus more on their other activities. So when we say outsourcing, how do ethics come in picture? What do ethics have to do with outsourcing anyways? We are familiar with the term trade etiquettes or more precisely put, we can call them professional code of conduct. Trade etiquettes, uh, let, me, let me say, take, an, take a situation wherein you go to a car mechanic for you give your car for servicing, but what he does is maybe he steals some car parts and you do not know, you did not expect him to do that. You gave him the car because he has got the expertise in that particular service. You believed in him. There is good faith always, but there is a breach of good faith when certain such act is done, which is against the professional ethics or the trade etiquettes. Now, similarly, in legal profession, when outsourcing comes into picture, what happens is a particular US or a UK client is actually giving you some legal documents and you being um, a legal professional working in LPO are not following certain ethics and that might get your work and their documents in danger and you do not want to lose a job for this. So, uh, in your LEAP module, you must have covered unauthorized practice of law, UPL. What is unauthorized practice of law? That again, if you do not follow these principles, you might go against the legal ethics of the LPO and we definitely do not want that. Unauthorized practice of law is crucial because um, particularly in US and many other foreign countries what happens is only those who are qualified and certified to practice law in a particular country say US may give advice on law and laws in that particular country. So obviously an Indian graduate, uh, Indian law graduate or experienced legal counsel will not be allowed to practice in US. In the and in the LPO context, therefore, there are rules that must be observed. Now, these we are calling as ethics. To prevent unauthorized um, practice of law, what the outsourcing company generally does is there has to be supervision, constant supervision of the work delegated. Uh, also, there has to be complete client representation. They are giving you your work, they are your clients. If you do not represent them as a lawyer, that is your duty to represent your client completely. If that is not happening, then it is unauthorized practice of law. There has to be supervision, there has to be client representation and the third most important part here is that there has to be disclosure of conflict of interest. Let us say your client Mr. Wilson comes to you with certain legal documents. He wants to find out about some IPR patent related inquiry and he is uh, given that work to you, um, a legal professional working in LPO. And also you have Mr. Ross who is also your client. But now what if Mr. Wilson and Mr. Ross are competitors? You, it is your duty, your duty bound to tell Mr. Wilson about your connection in trade with Mr. Ross. This is to avoid conflict of interest between your two clients and it is very important. If you work on same project for both the clients who are competitors with each other, you would be, uh, you would go against the professional ethics and it would amount to unauthorized practice of law. So, I, I hope now we are clear with how important ethics really are and why ethics are so important. Being a legal professional in LPO, working on a matter outsourced to it has to maintain the same 
standard of ethics and confidentiality as required by its counterparts and it is the duty of the LPO to ensure that it does not violate violate any professional ethics. So, if you do something while you work for a LPO, your LPO is duty bound to take care of it and see and make sure that you do not violate any of these professional ethics. What are these ethics? Let us take a look at these ethics. Today, we will be dealing with data security and client confidentiality. These are the two major topics that we will cover today. When we say data security, what do we understand by data? Now, data could be any information shared both manually and electronically. So, these could be your conversation over the phone or messages, emails, letters, any, any other mode of communication that has taken place, any other document that you submit or accept on behalf of the other party. So, any such data is covered under data security and why do we need to secure your data? Why, why do you secure your mails? You always have a password to it because you have a right to privacy. You won't want other people infringing your privacy, your right to privacy. This right to privacy is recognized in Universal Declaration of Human Rights and United Nations International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Now, many of the constitutions of several countries do not really have um, right to privacy in their constitutions, but uh, many legal systems in modern days have started recognizing this right. They have started giving it a legal recognition and even constitutional recognition. India being one of them, now we have right to privacy as a constitutional right. It is a part of a right to life. So, why, why is it so important? Because many, like we said, we would not want our personal data uh, being public for no reason at all. But again, is there any limit to uh, privacy and public public interest? What, what is more important? Are there any um, ground rules as to in given situation, privacy, privacy is more important than public interest? Well, this would depend upon case to case. What I suggest is please take a look at Wallen versus Roy. It's very crucial um, case, and if possible, just try and read the judgment and analyze it. Write a summary note, short note on what you understand. What happened in this case was uh, the state of New York passed New York State Controlled Substance Act in 1972. And this act required doctors to fill out forms for potentially harmful prescription drugs. Now, what the terms controlled substance means is that there are certain medicines which you cannot just go into a pharmacy and buy it for yourself. You can't. You need proper prescription by a qualified doctor. And why? Because these uh, medicines or these drugs could be very harmful in the sense that there is a great possibility or a risk of these substances substances being abused or misused. That is why the subscription or the prescription by doctor is very crucial. So, this act particular act was passed and it needed that the doctor makes three copies of this form. One would stay with the doctor, the other would go to the pharmacy and the third was sent to the health department of the New York state. Now, this form had a lot of personal data about patients age, name, address and other personal data which the patients, so a lot of people want agreeing to it being public, uh, publicly announced. So, um, hence this case and it was against uh, privacy, right to privacy and public interest. So, there has to be a balance uh, as to when public interest is important, when you lose your right to privacy and a particular knowledge should be public. You can also take cases where uh, for investors and shareholders uh, knowledge, you have to make certain financial records public. You then cannot claim a right to privacy. So, that is how it comes into picture. Also, another important part of data security apart from privacy is computer misuse. Now, what is computer misuse? When can it happen? It can happen in many, many cases. In our day to day life, we can see this taking place. We will see a three situations here. Uh, there is a possibility of mis computer misuse when unauthorized outsider illegally hacks system to steal information. This is one. It is quite clear on what it means. Any person who is not authorized to um, 
access a particular information when he hacks your systems and steals the information. Now, first thing that comes to my mind when I say this is your business competitor who would do this. Also, second situation would be out authorized insider exceeds its limits. Now, what does that mean? Um, let us take a situation again. Let us presume Ajay, this guy working in LPO has access to particular particular uh, information on his database, company database, but his access is limited to certain extent. Now, if he is working on particular project and to that project he can access only a certain, certain mail, certain documents and he cannot really exceed that limit, when he actually does that. Let us say Ajay has got a friend Vijay who says, oh please I need to have this information, could you please since you have access to it, easy access to it, could you help me um, with gain getting some, could you just mail me this one doc please, please and if Ajay does this, which he is not allowed to do, even if he has access to information, he's, he, he's, his access is limited by certain uh, principles uh, or rules, he cannot go and go beyond those limitations. When he does that, there is a computer misuse. Also, unauthorized third situation would be when, una, when authorized insider assists unauthorized outsider to misuse computer data. So, it might happen that Ajay might say, oh no, since I am not in office and but I have the keys and there is nobody there, just take the keys, walk into office and you can do whatever you want. So, he is assisting Vijay to commit a wrong, to commit an offense and what Vijay does is definitely computer misuse, but since Ajay is assisting him in doing this, he is equally liable for the mistake, for the misuse. Uh, there could be more situations in this scenario, there could be definitely a lot more than this and uh, let us say both, both um, Ajay and Vikram are working in same organization, but they are working in different teams. Ajay is working in a legal team and uh, this guy, other guy Vikram is uh, involved in business development. He need not and he does not have access to any legal documents, but if Ajay lets him access all this information, it would again be computer misuse. It would also happen that Ajay gives out his passwords. Now, be very, very careful about your passwords. You should not give out your passwords to anybody. No person who need not have it should not have it and only person you, who should have it is you. So, you should not give away your passwords like that to anybody. This is the most important ethics alert. So, please keep that in mind. Um, like I said, such situations may happen all the time and you need to be very careful when you are working in LPO because they are very, very particular about all these things. Moving forward, there is the third component to data security which is corporate information. Now, these days, thanks to the technology, the way we have been moving, a lot of new things coming up, computers making it really easy, we have digital information. A lot of information today, 90 percent of the information is corporate information is stored digitally. Now, what happens is, even if it is the best possible thing that could happen to the corporate information systems, the worst part is there is a high risk of security breaches. It is very easy, very convenient to hack somebody's computer system and take information. So, what the one, one example, one possible example of this could be given uh, by mentioning Choice Point Inc. Now, this uh, incident took place in America. What had happened is a relatively unknown American company called Choice Point Inc. Uh, revealed that it has collected sensitive personal information over 1 lakh people in America and this obviously was not a good thing to happen. So many people having their sensitive personal data with some random company not done. So, a lot of investors and shareholders, stakeholders got scared, they did not want this to happen and they in unison demanded that US government do, does something about the security laws, the data security laws and that there should be proper laws in place and action should be taken against the breachers or the infringers. So, uh, the suggested um, ways to overcome this was that comprehensive security program should be provided 
to prevent identity theft. Now this term identity theft, do a little research on what does one mean by identity theft. Please do not hesitate to put your comments on virtual classroom on this, take it as a homework and let me know what you feel on identity theft. So, comprehensive security uh, programs should be evolved. Also, two duties were placed on the organizations and that was a duty to provide ample security to clients from whom the company collects data. So, if you are collecting some company's data, you should assure them of ample data security and also if there is any breach or likelihood of any breach, then immediate disclosure should be made of that breach to your client. So, they know what has been happening. If any unauthorized person actually goes and uh, accesses certain information he was not supposed to, then instead of hiding it, it is better that you take some action against that person and also tell the company that some such thing has happened. So, um, now we will go to see what are the US laws. After this choice point happened, what all was US uh, government doing about data security and its protection and how and what we need to keep in mind to uh, make sure that we do not go against these ethics while working in LPO. Now, um, the thing in US is all the data security laws are not in place. It is anything but comprehensive. It is it's scattered everywhere amongst various uh, US uh, laws and rules and acts. So, there is nothing unified and there is no single law that governs data security in the US. The, U the laws in the US regarding data security are all scattered and what we will do here is we will see some or the most relevant um, acts are the laws not in detail because this is not the purpose of this session. We cannot be spending time just looking at each and every act in detail. We will just go through some of the very important ones like 6 or 7 and we will take the gist of it as to what it really is. First, we will begin with the Right to Financial Privacy Act of 1978, which is also referred as RFPA Act, RFPA. Now, RFPA is associated specifically with cases where the US government by authority takes into possession a consumer's financial records. So, what is happening here is your data or the data of any American citizen whose financial records are in possession with the government, with the US government are protected under this particular act. So, if there is any financial data by authority with the US government, it will be protected under this act. Second comes Electronic Communications Privacy Act of 1986, also known as ECPA. Now, what does ECPA cover? This law only protects against unauthorized access to confidential information. Now, please read this very, very carefully and try and understand what has been mentioned here. It says the, the protection is given against unauthorized access to confidential information. Therefore, uh, taking the previous example of Ajay and he misusing his limits. If we say that Ajay had access in first place to certain communication and if he overdoes it or if he accesses, crosses his limits and accesses certain information beyond his limit, then this act is not going to help. Why? Because it protects only against unauthorized access to confidential information. So, hope this is clear and we move forward, but what do we do about situations where people have access and they exceed that access? What is the law going to do about it then? Do we just keep quiet? No, there is something that protects that as well and that is called another law that is called the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 1984 CFAA. What does CFAA do? It is much more comprehensive than ECPA. In what sense? That its application is not limited by the mere existence of authorization. So, whether or not you have authority to ex access any information, if you are doing anything unauthorized, you will be punished for it. So, that is the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 1984 for you. Next comes Graham Leash Blaley Privacy and Safeguards Rule or the GLB Act. Now, this is a set of rules that primarily regulate information 
held by US financial institutions. Very important point to make here is uh, I hope you are not confused between GLB rules and the first act that we dealt with which was right to financial privacy act of 1978. Here, we are protected against the information or the personal data with the US government about your finances and in GLB rules what is protected is the data irrespective of its financial or otherwise the data which is with the US financial institutions not with the government. So, please take a note of this it is very important do not get confused here over this point and I hope you are clear on the point now. So, that was GLB rules for you. Then comes Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. Now, what started happening uh, like we saw Vail versus uh, Roy case, Wallen versus Roy case, uh, a lot of um, issues were erased when it came to health information, processing health information. Patients did not want the health authorities or the health department of states to reveal their personal information about their health. And that is why this act has been in lot of uh, news because uh, lot of prohibitions have been put now on processing health information of people by healthcare providers. So, this protects you specifically from your personal data related to your health which is held by the hospitals, doctors and healthcare providers generally could be even the state department of health. Now, proceeding further we will see two more acts of state of California. Now, the California Online Privacy Protection Act that protects you what it provides is regardless of your location company should post privacy notices while gathering information from internet. Now, what this means is even if a company is based in UK and it is collecting information from any person anywhere regardless of that location of that company if it is collecting data on internet then it has to post privacy notices it has to assure the in uh, the people that their information whatever they are giving submitting or making it available to the databases of a particular company will be secured will be safe and will not be made will not be made public without or with or without the consent of the uh, the data subject that is you if you providing the information. So, that was Online Privacy Protection Act of California. Similarly, California goes a step further and they have Data Base Protection Act. Now, what does this act do? This act makes it mandatory for companies to disclose breaches in the event of a breach when an unauthorized person accesses vital information. Here again what is happening is that you are bound as a company you are bound to disclose any breach uh, when a person unauthorized to access information accesses it. So, <clears throat> what about authorized person exceeding limits in accessing information take a look at this act try and find out does this really work does this act only talk about people having not having access and in, and uh, actually uh, going for certain you know information or stealing some information but does it also provide any remedy against people who are authorized to access information and exceed their limits try and find this out about this california database protection act we'll then move on to next act which is Sarbanes Oxley Act. Now, this is for self assessment, but I will give you a quick introduction or a little note on what this act is all about. In 2002, the US President George Bush signed this landmark legislation and it is described as the most far reaching reforms of American business practices. Uh, what this act does is it is applicable to small, medium, and large organizations, and there are a few very important sections of this act. I um, will just mention some here. Section 302 of this particular act brings out, uh, it, it mentions that financial reports of um, sh should be published for reviewing the status of internal controls. That apart, uh, there is one more section 
which imposes criminal penalty for altering documents to influence investigation now it actually imposes criminal penalty for any on any person who is altering documents to influence investigation this was section 802 and another section very important one which mentions that material changes in financial conditions must be urgently reported to the public so if there is any change brought in the financial conditions then the public concerned should know about such changes and this was section 409 take a look at these sections the material is also available in your WIM books the last module of this semester do do read the the module and it'll be much much clearer uh, and don't forget to do your homework on this particular act now this was us data security laws for uh, uh, lpos that they have to follow very strictly uh, we'll now proceed to uk database data security uh, acts now uk in on the other hand is much more precise unlike the us data security scenario in the uk there is one act which covers almost all the areas of data security in UK and that is the Data Protection Act of 1998, 1998 more commonly called as DPA. Now it is wide enough to cover most data security concerns and the most important feature of this particular act is that it not only covers the electronically filed or electronical electronical filing systems but also manual filings that's the most amazing the most important part of this particular act there's more to it we'll see some more important points of this uh, dpa and what it mentions we'll take a look at a few points first is the personal data sh shall be processed fairly and lawfully now what it means it's very simple whatever data you process from public or from any individual should be fairly and lawfully processed the data that you process or the, the the information that you have in your possession should always be up to date it should always be updated and if you need a set of information say for example there is some information wherein you want to know the property how much property a person owns where all is the property uh, how much does he earn per month similar things but there is B set of rules which is not at all important for you to know or for the for the purpose of um, the information process then that should be left out anything which is not important should not be involved in here so it has to be adequate relevant and not excessive not excessive at all to be kept up to date and uh, it should not be kept for a longer time also personal data shall be obtained only for one or more specified and lawful purposes so the purpose has to be lawful and shall not be further processed in any manner incompatible with that purpose or those purposes like i said it, it has to be adequate relevant and not excessive in relation to the purpose or purposes for which they are processed another important thing is that personal data processed for any purpose of course lawful or purposes shall not be kept for longer than necessary for that purpose or purposes so if you are done with the work your client has given you some work you finished with the project and that is about it you return that work the the project is over the contract is over they are no more dealing with you the terms of terms of and conditions are all met of the contract you need not keep that information or that data with you you need to or you required legally you should be deleting it all from your systems and assuring the client that you don't have their information anymore you're not supposed to keep it so you should not keep it longer than what it has been what is needed uh, last but not the least this um, data security the dpa act also requires that personal data shall not be transferred to a country or territory outside the European economic area unless that country or territory ensures an adequate level of protection for the rights and freedoms of data subjects in relation to the processing of personal data. Now, now it must be really clear that why we need ethics in LPOs. What it says is that uh, the UK, the DPA of UK says that no data should go out of its territory 
unless and until you are assured that the adequate level of protection will be given to the data subjects for the rights and freedoms of data subjects in relation to the processing of personal data. So, DPA is the trend setter in data security because it views the data subject at its central concern. Uh, what it also does is it is given the right, it, it gives the right to this data subject to, uh, to be informed of any processing action being carried out on his data. So, you will be informed about any process that has been taking place on your data because you are the subject. Now, it has certain terminology to it this particular act, the data subject is the person to whom data relates to. So, if it is you giving your data, you the data subject. This data controller, who is the data controller? The party that determines the purpose for which the data is used. So, let us say uh, I am the subject. I need, I, I go to the US company and say this is the work that I need to get done on this particular project and it is a banking project, I do not know how to, how to do this, uh, could you, I want to set up some units in India and would you please help me with this. Now, I come to, I outsource that work and find out what are the rules and regulations related to it, how do I get my project in place, uh, so it is outsourced and what happens is. The, the, the data is out there, the, I need the information. The, uh, if I am outsourcing it to a particular organization or the external supplier, I am the one who controls that data. So, I am the data controller, I determine what goes out, who has how much access to that particular data, when will that access be breached or exceeded. Uh, so, if I am deciding that, I am the data controller in that case. Then the data processor is the person or the party who is actually processing or working on that particular data. So, as a legal professional working in LPO, you would be the data processor. And then there is ICO, which is the information commissioner. And what is information commissioner? It is the independent supervisory authority who monitors the implementation of DPA. It actually does not just make law and leaves it there but it makes sure that the law is actually being implemented in its true sense. So, that is information commissioner. I suggest that you take a look at their website and take search for the security guidelines or the guide for data security and you will definitely get results. Take a look at those guides, it is very, very beneficial. Uh, the website if you want to note down is www.ico.gov that is G-O-V dot uk very important must must go through so take a look at the website and search for guides on data security or data security guide and it will give you a lot of information which will be definitely useful for your this particular module moving forward there's something more to the uk data security laws and there's one more act which is the computer misuse act now, the Computer Misuse Act uh, of 1990 was passed prior to the DPA obviously and the objective of this act was to prevent any unauthorized access. Now, what it does is it covers both the insider, the authorized insider and the unauthorized outsider who is hacking the systems and stealing information. So, that is Computer Misuse Act, but since it was drafted much earlier and was little inadequate with a lot of technology and digital corporate information coming into picture, there was a lot of reform needed and so we have DPA which is much more precise than the Computer Misuse Act. Uh, that was so far we have completed US laws and UK laws on data security. Uh, we will now move on to the data security laws in India, but before we do that, uh, just a little bit more on the right to privacy. When we discussed right to privacy, what does that right actually cover? I would like to emphasize a little more here. Um, when we say we have right to privacy, it includes uh, your personal privacy, your family's privacy, home and correspondence and it also gives you the right that you should not be attacked upon your honor and your reputation. So, that is what the right of right of privacy actually gives you 
and like I said it is recognized in many of the constitutions. India recognizes it as uh, one of the constitutional rights under right to life. So, it, it has quite a wide ambit and it is very important that it is not just to keep in mind that it is not just yours, but your families, your correspondence and uh, the right that you, your honor and reputation is not attacked upon. We will move on further and uh, see if we have any laws at all in India and if there are any what are those acts. Let us just move on to data security laws in India. Now, like I said there are rules that if you are working in US, if you are qualified uh, and certified to practice in US, only then can you give legal advice, otherwise you cannot. And this restrains, this particular rule restrains uh, the possibility of legal work being outsourced and it is being outsourced in India to a greater extent only on the condition that you fulfill certain provisions or follow certain rules very strictly and not go beyond it. So, a lot of anxiety among outsourcing foreign companies prevails because of this. They want to know if, if we outsource work to India, will they actually follow the data security laws? Will it be adequate? If it is not adequate and if there is any breach, will the Indian government take any action against it? Are we protected? Should we go ahead and do this? So, there was a lot of anxiety which is being put to rest by the IT Act, the Information Technology Act which was very recent. It was passed in 2000. So, as we see it is not, it is really new and we still need to develop a lot to gain confidence of outsiders so that they trust us enough to outsource their work. Uh, the IT has various provisions dealing with both civil and criminal data security offenses. Thank you so much.